Help is on the way. That's what Lydia Anseline's parents were told when they called triple zero as their 14-year-old daughter was struggling to breathe. That help arrived too late to save her, and now the family wants to make sure it never happens again. Checking on his little girl before going to bed was this dad's nightly ritual. Young Lydia's bed is still made, her panda toy resting on the pillow and her bedside table just so. Try to be as strong as we can, but still don't understand. Like, she's gone. It's been almost four weeks since Bernard and Corinne Anseline lost their precious only daughter. It was a regular night at home in Melbourne's southeast. Lydia and her mum were having some girl time, as they called it, when her daughter started having a bad asthma attack. Like, it was just a normal, usual phone call to triple zero for me. All the details, our address, and then helps on the way. Help is on the way. That's what Mum Corrine was told when she rang triple zero. So I put her down and I started applying CPR straight away. The couple's other children also have asthma, so they'd been through this many times before, but never had it taken so long for an ambulance to arrive. She was turning blue by then and that we didn't know what to do. She's dying, we need help now. I was more concentrating I keep as much air as I can in her chest until the ambulance got here, but unfortunately the ambulance never arrived. Four days after her 14th birthday, Lydia died in her dad's arms. I'll grab her hand and lift her, her head up and go, Lydia! And she just opened her eyes and goes, Dad, I love you. And then she just squeezed my hand real hard and slowly you just feel the hand goes like, there's no more pressure, it's too late. Yeah. According to Lydia's parents, Corrine first rang triple zero at 1.07 a.m. She rings a second time at 1.25 a.m., by which stage Lydia is unconscious. At 1.35 a.m., a fire truck arrives, and they say it was a couple of minutes after that, paramedics pulled up. They'd waited about 30 minutes for help. We're not the sort of family like to blame people things but I just don't want this to happen again to anyone else out there. It's a number they call far too often. Bernard and Corrine dial triple zero three or four times every year for their children's asthma attacks. Seven minutes that's the longest we had ever had to wait but on the 13th of April it was totally a different story. The cruelest part is they live a short 13 kilometres from the hospital. I could put my own daughter and drive her 12 minutes um, to get to the hospital. Knowing how quickly she deteriorated, do you think if you'd taken her to hospital that she would have survived? Yes, because I had plenty of time. If we knew, we could have like safe her, she'd be still here. And so now, Bernard and Corrine live with the what-ifs. Just six weeks earlier, Lydia was having an asthma attack and her mum did drive her to this hospital. On that occasion, she says the doctor and nurses told her she should have called triple zero instead. And so on this tragic night, this girl's parents thought they were doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah they still end up doing the wrong thing. <laughs> How often do you come back in here now? Uh, pretty much every day because it's a habit I still have, like, can't change it. With her pink painted walls and bow collection, Lydia's bedroom shows what a girly girl she was. The clever, creative teenager dreamed of becoming a lawyer. That was one of her projects she did um, about Mauritius. A school project on natural disasters. Yes, yeah. and she got an A+. I was a rat. Do you feel like there might ever come a day where maybe you don't come in every day or you change the room or... It's a hard thing to think about. Yeah, it is. Mm. But I think my wife, she just wants the memory of it a little bit. Lydia's mum is virtually paralysed with grief. The family home hit with an unfamiliar silence. But full of memories, Lydia's calisthenics medals and trophies are everywhere. 
one of the few times we see Corrine smile is watching her daughter's concert videos. So she's got to put a smile on her face. Oh, it's terrible, it's tragic. This sort of case, these are the highest calibre of emergencies that our members attend to. Danny Hill, Secretary of the Victorian Ambulance Union, says a large part of the problem is wasted resources. What happens is our members are tied up at low acuity cases that, if anything, don't require anyone, let alone, um, you know, a, a high priority response. And Bernard and Corrine just wish the triple zero call taker had given them a more realistic time frame. Just be honest, like if the ambulance is going to run late, let, them, let the person know. In a statement to a current affair, Ambulance Victoria says... We extend our deepest condolences to the patient's family and loved ones in this extremely difficult time. We are undertaking a full investigation into this tragic incident to better understand what happened and why. You wonder how a parent finds the strength to speak publicly when flowers are still fresh on their daughter's burial plot. But Bernard is determined to save the next Lydia. I just don't want that to happen to, to them or anyone else out there because it does hurt and I just couldn't save her. Statements from Ambulance Victoria and the Emergency Services Telecommunications Authority are on our website.